Welcome to this week's live ASX strategy session. Great having you with me. Plenty of interesting things to talk about today with the um, ASX 200 pulling back a bit, new highs in gold, a couple of interesting stocks to have a look at later on, as well as any of the, uh, the stock codes you want me to have a look at as well. They're always interesting to, to go through. So get those ready for a little bit later. Um, now, everything today, general commentary only, doesn't take your personal situation into account. Having been through all that, let's jump straight into that first chart for the week. So I have the ASX 200 up here on the screen. And well, it was a new all time high last Thursday. And now this week, quick of the, the previous rally. There's often a tendency to worry about market tops in these situations. Every time the ASX 200 hits a new high, and then pulls back, people start to worry about a much bigger reversal. But more often than not, I find that the best course of action is to view pullbacks as temporary pauses within an ongoing trend. So just looking at this chart, the ASX 200, it's had over, over half a dozen pullbacks over the, over the, the course of this year. And uh, you can just see them all, all these pullbacks. We get these rallies to, to new highs, and then we get these pullbacks. And this is when all the worries come in. And, uh, and they've ranged in their, their magnitude in both duration and time as well. So we've got the April and July periods so as five months of sideways trading within a range. And then we've got these shorter, sharper pullbacks like, like August, which bring on a whole lot of, lot of fear. The one thing they all have in common, though, is that they all have been temporary pauses in the trend. And this is the thing with uptrends. Uptrends often lead to more strength. We'll get these pauses along the way, but they do tend to lead to, to more strength. And uh, But I think what, what, makes these, what makes these pullbacks so difficult is that we find that we get the pullbacks and um, lots of people, they start worrying about more, more dire scenarios when the, when the market comes back. So you'll, you'll probably know the, um, there's, a, there's a saying, it's been around for years, I'm sure you know it, markets climb a wall of worry. And, and this is why we've got this constant concern around every corner that every peak is going to, going to be going to be the one, going to be the one where the market actually does, does turn significantly higher from. And the thing is, every time a market will eventually peak, no, we know that markets always do peak and no one knows which peak is going to be the one. But I think the odds favour the ASX 200 at current levels, I think the odds favour new all time highs before this is done. So let's step back. Let's step back and consider the underlying chart as we have it, the underlying structure. So we've got the, the 50 and 100 day moving averages. These continue to, to rise. Um, price prices is still above the moving averages. And, um, and we also have a series of higher highs and higher lows. So I think the default position based on that should be to uh, continue to look at this as a, as a bullish market. I think that what the quick reversal, I think what this quick reversal tells us is that there's more consolidation to come. The fact that, I think the fact that prices have, have retraced most of October's rally, I think it suggests it's, going to, it's just going to take a little bit more time to consolidate. And um, all sorts of ways this could, this could play out. One scenario would be for consolidation, um, sideways consolidation. Um, above support, so we've got support here at 8,100. Um, this coincides with the 50-day moving average coming up just beneath it. So perhaps it's, it's sideways consolidation above, above the averages. And uh, we can see this type of, of price action playing out in the, the, the 2020 bull market. So if we just compress this a bit and, and move across to back to, to 2020, you can see how this happens. You know, the market runs. Um, then, then travels sideways into the averages, runs again back to the averages, and, and so on. That, that sequence continues. So we often see this, uh, this sequence where prices rally and then we pull back towards the averages. And I think we, that's how we should be, be framing the, the latest price action. So just coming back to, to, to current day, 
it's that same general sequence of rallying back to the averages. I think the the most likely scenario, I think the scenario to to be um, to to favour is that this um, this sequence does does continue, of course, with those consolidations along along the way. Uh, equal weight, having a look at the ASX on an equal weight basis, which is something we we often do, which I think is a helpful thing to do as well, because it takes out the the influence of the big cap stocks and looks at the market as a the ASX 200 as a as a whole. Now I think this is interesting. The ASX um, the, uh, the equal weight, equal weight, you put on about 10% in, in just over five weeks. You can see that 10% advance. Now, that's more than the average yearly move. So you go back over time, you get the ASX 200's average move over a year and 10% in five weeks, well, that, that's more than the average. And that's, of course, over just such a short period of time. And... Uh, and given so, given I think given the extent of that move, and the prices did get a bit stretched above the the fifty day moving average in that that short space of time, given all that, it's not that surprising we're now seeing a pullback. So it's always important put everything into perspective. So we're getting this pullback, but it follows after a ten percent rally, which was almost uninterrupted. Um, we saw something similar in we saw something similar back in in January. So again, we had this from the October low, we had a strong rally through to the December high. That was about a 14% gain, not much, much interruption within that rally. It was pretty much straight upwards, and then we get the pullback. So yeah, it's, it's just it's, you know, it's how this price action often evolves. We, we see, it, see it often, and uh, so we shouldn't be surprised when we see it. I think we should be, be viewing this current pullback at this point, like we did this this pullback back in in January, and remember consolidations are normal and they occur regularly. There's there's nothing here at this point in time to suggest this pullback is is any different. I always come back to the underlying framework. This is something we should do. We should always come back to the underlying framework when we're looking at a pullback. When we're going look what what what's this pullback all about? The framework I look at is what are the moving averages doing? Where is price relative to the moving averages? And as it stands, we have rising moving averages and price is currently above those moving averages. So for me, at this point, this remains bullish. Uh, I'm continuing to approach this market from the long side. I'm also using those wide trailing stops I talk about so often. And the point of a wide trailing stop, you know, it's an exit point which is often below the 100-day 100, 100 moving average. The point of that is to try and see off these inevitable pullbacks, which we get all the way throughout an uptrend. And, of course, the, the beauty of a trailing stop is that it does provide an exit level for when the market does eventually turn and start hitting lower. Now... If you're getting some value from this, please hit that like button. Please leave us your comment. Just hey, thanks to the video. Tells YouTube you're watching. YouTube shows other people. Helps me heaps. Please do those things. And uh, now, small ordinaries. I want to move on to the small ordinaries next and then also into the, the, the stock codes you want me to look at as well as the commodities, of course. Um, but of course, that wraps up the free section. So if you're not a strategy session member, link below, click that, come on in, cost you very little. And I'm pretty sure you're going to get a whole lot of information for that small amount of money a cup of cost of a cup of coffee really so um think about doing that so okay now let's go over and check out 